Yeah, how you do, Christian. Just end up in one piece. That's the main thing. Well, that was a big half lose. He really sort of got, got back to grips with the bike again as it slammed from one side to the other. And, of course, we're going to see a lot of Saron tonight being the French Grand Prix. They'll give plenty of coverage to their own rider. So the pressure is right on him. Yeah, weighing into the lead. You can see the... Uh the uh, Honda certainly hasn't lost any of its speed, although the Yamaha looks just as quick now. Now listen to the crowd now, because it's not only Gardner out in front, Saron really staying to throw out the challenge as he did last weekend in the Yugoslav Grand Prix, and it's now Gardner and Saron, and Saron slips through in the French crowd. You can hear him from here. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a ding-dong between um, Christian and Wayne, because uh, at all costs, uh, Wayne wants to win this race, as does Saren in front of his home crowd. So uh, I think it's going to be uh, quite a hard one. I'm really surprised to see the Suzuki up uh, in third position. I think it's just the fact that uh, Schwantz is such a hard rider. Right, with right, Christian, I first and second, so. The other rider that was down was uh, Gardner's teammate. Well, it, it could be, yes. It looks like it may be uh, Shunji Yatsushiro, the Japanese uh, rider. We haven't got any confirmation on that yet, but uh, he looks like uh, the candidate. Well, this has been fast and furious. It was Gardner, then Saron, then back with Gardner. Saron again. Look at Kevin Spons now. Comes right down on the inside, oh. side by side, and has a touch too with Christian Saron. So it's all happening here at Paul Ricard, but tucks in again to fill in behind in third place. Yeah, and Lawson's uh, just nipped past Rainey for fourth place. So Eddie Lawson on the move. He's the big mover at the moment while the dog fights on up front. Lawson, like Eddie Lawson. championship yeah. fought right to the wire, but he's running second at the moment. Saron has been bumped back to third. Swans is fourth. Wayne Gardner still out in front. But the challenge is coming from Eddie Lawson. Yeah, I see the back end of uh, Wayne's bike start. He had a real long, long drift on around that right-hander there. So uh, let's just hope that it's not tearing the uh, tyres to pieces too much. In fifth place is Rainey. Then we had the, Ra the Radagays. Then Killy. Mammal is the big mover. He's in eighth and heading forward all the time. McGee and then Haslam. Look at this side by side now as Lawson makes his move, tucks in underneath and takes the lead off Wayne Gardner. So Lawson, the big improver, he's come from way out of the clouds and now leads. Can Gardner come back? I would say so. I can't see that. Uh... Wayne Gardner trying to, uh, to line him up now. Closing up under brakes, but Lawson just gets that little buffer. Gardner gets the power down quickly and comes right up to the Yamaha. It's Yamaha, Honda and Yamaha and then Suzuki at the moment. Yeah, the lucky thing is uh, they seem to have got through. <laughs> it looks like Gardner's uh, back in the front again now. Yeah. Well, Gardner now fighting his way back. Well, this is just amazing stuff here tonight. Riders just forcing their way back. We might just have a quick look at the yeah, championship the, uh, points. I think we've got to watch the double right-hander at uh, the end of the uh, fast straights. Um, that's where Christian's going to make his move. In actual fact, it's the only place that Christian can make his move. Well, Swans too, because uh, he's, he's done it before from fourth and stuck himself right into uh, first place. Look at this. Swans coming up now on the outside. That's lost on the red bike in the centre. The blue bike of Saron side by side with Swans. Gardner out in front, but it'll be Lawson in second, then Saron, then Swans. So nothing changes. Yeah, I would say that Christian is too far back to um, be able to get a run on Lawson around this double right-hander. Oh, that well, looks Gardner's, like Gardner. He's slowed. Something's gone wrong. Oh, I don't he's, he's slowed. Well, this is a tragedy. He's fought his way through, and all of a sudden, we just got a glimpse of the bike there. Slowed right down, so that means Lawson now is in front. Saron is in second place. Swans is third. And the Australian were rotten lucky. We are saying he only had to hang on the last lap, and the bike has gone off. Something's happened. Cruel luck. I can't believe it. Well, he's had just such rotten luck. I mean, he's fought his way through, and here it is, Eddie Lawson heading up now for a win. You can't even see where the Australian is on the Honda, but it just slowed all of a sudden. Something went dramatically wrong. Here's the chequered flag out, and Eddie Lawson has taken it, and he goes, throws his hands up. Saron is second. Swans is third on the Suzuki. He can't believe it. He's flapping his arms around. He's Gardner, fourth, looking down at the bike now, the Australian. Race. And in seven years, we've had seven different winners of this race. Spencer Thrunet, the third place, pushing Sheen back. 
And somebody went down the slip road, just went across the back of in front of the screen. I think that was Didier de Redigate. It could well have been Didier. Didier was in fifth place, and it looks at like indeed Lawson now is in fifth position on the distinctive red fairing of the Yamaha. And Spencer looking for a way past Haslam. Mamola, Haslam, Spencer on Honda's first, second and third. Mamola and Haslam, of course, on the three-cylinder machine. Uh, Spencer on the four-cylinder bike. And Barry Sheen there on the Suzuki in fourth place as Spencer goes through on the inside to go through to second. And Sheen is going to pass Haslam. Sheen has gone ahead of Ron Haslam, so Haslam is back now into fourth spot. Mamola. Spencer and Spencer looking for the inside line and it looks like and Spencer goes through into the lead coming round to complete the first lap they're at the chicane and it's Spencer, Mamola, Sheen, Haslam, Lawson, Roche then Wayne Gardner, Wolfgang oh, so there's out. a tight and twisty Aston circuit the track is very narrow and Spencer's slowing Spencer is in trouble Freddie Spencer is in mechanical problem and this could well be the moment that Freddie Spencer loses the Something final of that magnitude. And out in front, it's getting closer and closer. And of course, Lawson doesn't really won't want to mix it too much. The last thing he want to do would be knocked off in this little group. So Lawson, I think, quite happy to be fifth. Lawson, and over the leader, Shane from Haslam, Raymond Rush now up into fourth place. And although the Hondas and Barry and Haslam goes through, takes. Barry Sheen, so it's Haslam in second place now, ahead of Barry Sheen. Lawson, of course, now knows that Spencer is unlikely, almost much, much quicker starting now, and that's made life easy. And Rush just sails through on the inside of Mamola. Absolutely no problem at all. Rush seized a moment, dived through on the inside. Stop the and Ma Rush, Mamola and Lawson. And Mamola dives through on the inside of Raymond Rush. Absolutely superb stuff. And will Lawson riders. use this as an opportunity to get ahead? It looks like Biliotti. I think it's Lorenzo Giselli, another Italian. Oh, and he gets right, oh, almost peeled off into Mamola there and then gets in Lawson's way. And Ross chooses the opportunity to go right up the inside, passing from Lawson on the brakes. <laughs> and any Lawson shows exactly... It's unlikely that Mamola yet knows that it's Ross who's behind him now. Because it certainly won't have come up on his pit ball this time through. And it's oh. Ross. It's not Ross behind, it's Ross in front. And there again, Ross went wide and Mamola sees the chance to go through on the inside. Oh, going to be in Ross's turn to be zapped by Lawson. They've lost some valuable seconds then. Mamola and Lawson pulls out of the slipstream and just eases through, almost having to go round the Roche's elbow. And Roche is going to chop it back again. Lawson pushed back to third spot. But Roche ran wide again, almost off the track there in his desperate late breaking manoeuvre. He really is riding a touch over the edge. Well, I think when you're that close to winning your first Grand Prix, Very Peter. <coughs> and Raymond not leaving Lawson the chance of going through on the, on the inside there. And whether Roche has decided he's going to be second and uh, be a good boy for Honda. And Law oh, Mamola was, he was almost on the grass then, Peter. Using every inch, including all the white line there. Mamola, Roche, Lawson, that's the order there. Less than half a lap to go now, and Roche gets closer. You can see Mamola using the white line and a little bit of the dirt on the outside, and Roche is charging. I don't think Lawson's in this one. I think it's a battle between Mamola and they, I think they've lapped this guy for a second time in about six laps. And Mamola and Roche. And it's the final charge. And Lawson just taking it easy. He's well out of it. And Mamola and Will Rush go for the inside line. He has. And Raymond Rush has gone in front. And he's going to hang on. I think now Mamola goes round the outside. And they actually clash fairings. I'm sure they touch then. And Mamola wins. And Rush is second. And Lawson is third. And an
Grant, who has done so much in Japan to get that machine going for this race, is out of the race on the very first lap. And now, this is Kenny Roberts setting about Ferrari, and look at the speed of that Yamaha, because Roberts goes straight past Virginio Ferrari and takes third position and is now closing right up on Barry to Cox, Steve. which is, I believe, where Steve Parrish has come off. And look at the symmetry of these riders as they bank to left and right, and they're going down hangar straight now at 160 miles an hour. Roberts takes it. Roberts uses his superior power and blasts fast into the lead. Kenny Roberts, then, the world champion who has already won four events this year, is the new leader on lap five out of 28 in the Marlborough British Grand Prix. Katayama, Takazumi Katayama is in the pits, and that's the second of the two Hondas. Mick Grant out on the very first lap. Katayama and Sheen challenging Hartog for second place as they come down to Woodcote at the end of lap five. And Hartog's going to retake the lead. And he does so, and a great roar goes up from the crowd. This Dutchman is tremendously popular with the British crowd, this gigantic British crowd. And we're seeing a British Grand Prix the like of which we haven't seen for a very long time. Because just behind these three are Virginio Ferrari, second place in the World Championship. Roberts looks over his shoulder, there's Ferrari. And behind Ferrari, who is fourth, it's Van Dulman and Hartog leads. Hartog leads. In she is in position. second. Christian Saron, the Frenchman, the leader. And the second place now. She leads. Barry Sheen goes through, marvellous bit of overtaking, just slid through on the inside of Hartog, and look at the wobble on that bike. Barry Sheen was not at all happy with the handling of his machine in the first three sessions of practice. So, for the last session, they took a drastic step, changed the front forks to air springing, and Hartog goes through. A tremendous ding-dong battle between three of the top drivers, Hartog in the white leathers, Kenny Roberts in the yellow outfit, and the gap between Kenny Roberts, Ferrari through in fourth place, Sheen up into second position out of Hartog slipstream, Ben Dolman is still fifth, and then Ooh, it's to complete the 15th lap. And now Sheen's doing it, it could well be the Barry Sheen, yes, at the end of the lap, and the crowd rises, the crowd roars, and Barry Sheen leads at the end of lap 15, down to Cox, Will Hartog dropping back all the time. So the Dutchman is either tired himself, and it's quite, a, and look at that, Barry Sheen with absolute effrontery, not only looks over his shoulder, but takes his left clutch hand off the handlebar and waves to Kenny Roberts. And cares Kenny Roberts' answer. Don't you wave at me, young man, because this is what will happen to you. Sheen behind him. Roberts goes through on the inside of the tail ender, and the tail ender looks to me very much like Gianni Rolando, the Italian rider. Roberts is past him. Sheen is past him. Down the hangar straight for the last time. The 28th time in this 28th lap race. Into Stowe Corner for the last time at 100 miles an hour. It's going to be one of the closest Grand Prix finishes for a very, very long time. Sheen is far enough ahead of Will Hartog not to have to worry about the Dutchman as they go to club corner. The last but one right-hander on the circuit because they're coming up to Abbey and is, is Barry Sheen going to be able to do anything about it? I doubt it. But Kenny Roberts goes into Abbey. It's that close, you can hardly divide them on the stopwatch. From Abbey up to Woodcote, underneath the bridge is going to be tremendously close as they go into the last corner of the race. This is it, at 130 miles an hour. The chicken flag is out, Kenny Roberts, and Barry Sheen is gaining, gaining, gaining. And there is less than a machine's length in it with a fantastic race, with Will Hartog finishing in third place. And Kenny Roberts won di un evento storico di cui l'uso nell'artefice. La prima vittoria della Cagiva 500 in un gran premio, il successo nella sfida di voler portare al vertice la più giovane marca del gruppo. Siamo in Ungheria nel 1992.
La pista è bagnata e nonostante Lawson parta davanti al gruppo, perde immediatamente posizioni nei primi giri. La rosea situazione delle prove ufficiali sembra compromessa, ma Lawson non molla. In questa prima difficile parte di gara dà comunque il massimo con le gomme intermedie per non perdere contatto dai primi. Poi progressivamente la pista si asciuga. Lawson ha la possibilità di prodursi nella memorabile rimonta che lo porta ad umiliare i più grandi assi del suo tempo. Il primo ad essere preso è Kevin Schwanz. Ecco il sorpasso che Lawson effettua con estrema decisione. L'avversario ne è talmente sorpreso da rischiare il contatto. Anche Wayne Rainey viene superato di slancio. In uscita di curva la cagiva accelera e passa davanti. Arriva anche il turno di Randy Mamola che non oppone resistenza. Ed ora il sorpasso su Chandler che vale la vittoria. Lawson deve spostarsi a destra e frenare sul bagnato rischiando l'intraversata. Ma la sua tecnica lo sorregge portandolo al comando. L'arrivo vittorioso è l'ultimo acuto che corona una carriera strepitosa.